For almost two years, Xbox and Activision Blizzard have been trying to close up one of the biggest mergers in video game history. Immediately, it was dealt with strong resistance from first PlayStation and then regulators and governments around the world. Now, after all of the investigations, partnerships, and exclusivity deals, Activision, Blizzard, and King are now officially a part of Xbox. In January 2022, Xbox announced their intent to acquire Activision, Blizzard, and King, the studios behind massive franchises like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and on the mobile side, Candy Crush. And just days into the announcement, two years ago, PlayStation stood up with the world's loudest objection, crying that losing Call of Duty to the Xbox platform would significantly harm their business and create a monopoly. And what followed was a well-documented legal battle that saw long court cases with the Federal Trade Commission in the US and regulatory battles with UK's Markets and Acquisitions Agency. Xbox spoke up immediately and explained that they would continue to release Call of Duty on the PlayStation platform, which happens to be one of their highest selling game franchises in the modern era, and promised to keep it for many years, releasing on the competing console, the PlayStation. And this wasn't good enough for the head of PlayStation, Jim Ryan, who oversees many times throughout the past year, not just trying to block the deal, but to get Xbox the worst possible outcome by accusing them of creating a monopoly. Now, at the end of 2023, with a two-year battle with legal teams, government agencies, and signing agreements with small and large companies to partnership with this massive merger, Xbox now officially owns Activision, Blizzard, and King. But what does this mean for Xbox fans? Xbox's Phil Spencer stated this morning at the official announcement, saying, As one team, we'll learn, innovate, and continue to deliver on our promise to bring the joy and community of gaming to more people. We'll do this in a culture that strives to empower everyone to do their best work, where all people are welcome, and is centered on our ongoing commitment for gaming for everyone. He continues, together we'll create new worlds and stories, bring your favorite games to more places so more players can join in, and we'll engage with and delight players in new innovative ways in places they love to play, including mobile, cloud streaming, and more. Close quote. On the matter of exclusivity, most games like Overwatch, Diablo, and Call of Duty will remain multi-platform and release on PlayStation. And Phil continues saying, For the millions of fans who love Activision, Blizzard, and King games, we want you to know that today is a good day to play. You are the heart and soul of these franchises, and we are honored to have you as a part of our community. Whether you play on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, PC, or mobile, you are welcome here and will remain welcome even if Xbox isn't where you play your favorite franchise. Because when everyone plays, we all win." Close quote. Activision, Blizzard, and King are made up of 11 main gaming studios that are working on a handful of game franchises that are in service right now on console and PC. But they also own some 25 mainstream franchises that have been dormant for the most part of the decade. Activision has been relegated to become the Call of Duty machine. This means that five or six studios on this list are all working together to create Call of Duty games annually, which draws in some 250 million players every year. Call of Duty will remain multi-platform and release on PlayStation and Xbox consoles as well as PC, but they're also on mobile, and through this agreement, Ubisoft will control the licensing for Call of Duty on cloud streaming services, but there is more to this deal than creating Call of Duty for Xbox. Infinity Ward, one of the most loved studios that creates Call of Duty, is actually working on an open world action RPG. The leaked report says, quote, Activision Publishing is seeking a talented and passionate narrative director to ideate, create, and direct the implementation of story, dialogue, and scenes for an unannounced AAA project. In this role, you will create a cohesive vision for the narrative presentation, its connection with the gameplay experience, and you'll be responsible for direction of cinematic moments. Your role is to provide the best narrative and cinematic experience in an open world RPG." Close quote. Xbox's Phil Spencer has also explained that once Activision is under their management in the gaming division, they would like to see the studios responsible for Call of Duty pair back their annualized releases and get some of those studios working on new titles or reviving old beloved franchises. 
One that fans have been asking for a long time is the rumored Spyro 4, and with this 15 year long whimsical franchise only breathing through remasters and on backward compatibility, the rumor of a full new release of Spyro for the fourth game is something that Beanox or Studio Toys for Bob could be working on instead of being relegated to create trees or texture work for the next Call of Duty game. Blizzard, the team behind World of Warcraft and Overwatch are working on a survival MMO codenamed Odyssey. And this new IP has been teased by Jez Corden of Windows Central. And even though we haven't seen anything of this game, he said that it is further along than most people expected and it's quite possible that we could see Odyssey this summer for release as early as the end of 2024. Fans of the Activision-created Transformers Cybertron games have been asking for High Moon Studios to create another one of those beloved third-person shooters that celebrate the G1 era of Transformers. The license would have to be repurchased to use for Activision, and under Microsoft's funding, that shouldn't be a problem. And Lulu Cheng Masturbate, ABK's communications consultant, reassured fans about Transformers, saying, quote, we have the code, it was not lost, and never was. Meaning that this great foundation of a third-person shooter and transforming vehicle combat game could make its return to Xbox, and it would be massive for Game Pass. Speaking of Game Pass, there are going to be some huge releases and big additions coming to Game Pass in the near future. Although they might not land here in 2023, starting early next year, it looks like a ton of games from the Activision and Blizzard catalog will be coming to Game Pass. The team said, it's awesome to see anticipation building for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. We've been getting some questions whether our upcoming and recently launched games will be available via Game Pass. We do not have plans to put Modern Warfare 3 or Diablo 4 into Game Pass this year. We expect to start working with Xbox to bring our titles to more players around the world, and we anticipate that we would begin adding games into Game Pass sometime in the course of next year." Close quote. Jess Corden said, Beyond Call of Duty, there are dozens, maybe hundreds of legacy titles Microsoft and Activision could throw into Game Pass. From Spyro to StarCraft, Microsoft is set to gain reams of highly visible, memorable, and nostalgic franchises, many of which are dormant and ripe for revival. Close quote. In the midst of the superhero franchises led by Marvel's Spider-Man, Xbox could use this opportunity to revive the anti-hero genre with a return, or reboot, of Prototype, an open-world destructive Venom-like character in a plagued New York City. Prototype 1 and 2 was loved by fans, and the return of this game to the Xbox platform fills a need in the modern era when sandbox open-world games are few and far between. Radical Entertainment was reduced down after Prototype 2, and now the remaining staff at that studio are working in a support role for Call of Duty. A prototype reboot with modern shooting controls and more variety in interaction with the city is something that Activision should be looking into. The Activision Blizzard merger is all about bringing a variety of games to the Xbox platform and to Game Pass, but also having a foothold in the mobile games market, which will be a small portion of Xbox's strategy going forward, not just for small mobile games, but mostly for implementing AA and AAA gaming onto mobile screens like a phone or a tablet, or especially the new handheld devices. Looking at the current franchises like Overwatch, Diablo, and any continued support for World of Warcraft, it is quite obvious that those games along with Call of Duty will remain multi-platform as they have a service-based customer on console and PC. New IPs, however, that will soon be announced or are being developed right now by Activision and Blizzard Studios are most likely to be fully exclusive to the Xbox platform. This means that any game that is exclusive to the Xbox platform will really only be excluded from the PS5 and Nintendo platform. Xbox's games as they stand are available on nearly any and every device from mobile screens, handhelds, laptops, all the way up to high-end gaming PCs. The fear of a monopoly, even though this deal is now officially done and Xbox owns Activision, Blizzard, and King has been put to rest as Xbox has made key partnerships with mainstream and even upcoming cloud streaming services to allow everyone to play their games as long as they are paying or buying within the Xbox ecosystem. 
Xbox will continue to oversee Activision Blizzard and King game development while each of the studios works independently as they have over the past decades. But the direction and the technical support that can be on offer from all of the Xbox Game Studios partners to work together to create more games means that this merger, even though it is the biggest in gaming history, is also one of the brightest thing for gaming fans around the world. This is Colt Eastwood. Thank you so much for checking out this video. What a long two years it's been covering this stuff. I put five or six videos out throughout the two years covering this in detail, talking about more about what these studios are going to do and what they have made. And you can check those out if you want to hear more about what these studios are capable of and what we have to look forward to. But this legal battle and all of the things that went along with it, people are really diving into all of the business end of Xbox and what PlayStation was pushing against. And it's been a pretty crazy time, but after all the arguing, Xbox owns Activision Blizzard. Xbox wins this one, and they're going to have a ton of content for all of us to play. If you end up enjoying this video, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified of new weekly content. If you want to further support the work we do here on the Cold Eastwood channel, it would mean a lot if you'd hit the join button. The join channel membership button gets you a custom icon that I drew next to your name in the chats or in the comment section but it gets you early access to videos some 12 hours before they go up. You can go in there and comment with the other channel members. It gets you entered into merch giveaways like this Control Your Life shirt, but you get to pick whatever. If you win, you'll get to pick the merch of your choice. But if you also want to support, I have the Patreon, which gets you all of those same benefits, but also gets you into the X and C podcast club where we talk on Xbox Live and you get all kinds of other things. And there is even a super class if you wanna learn how to do production, audio work, mic work, camera work, and all that stuff. I do one-on-one -on -one training sessions there as well. Check out the Patreon, the link is in description. But even better, if you wanna hear more in-depth discussion like we're going to be doing this next week, we have the X and C podcast that runs every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern. And there my co-host and I will talk about the latest gaming news. We're going to be diving into everything that this Activist and Blizzard King plus Xbox announcement entails more than I can do in just a 15 minute video. So check that out. That's also on Spotify, Apple, Google podcasts, but I want to know what you think about this, what you think about Xbox. Is the console war over? I think it's finally over. I think the days of counting console sales or this piece of plastic versus this piece of plastic are so archaic and antiquated and Xbox is moving forward and putting their games on everyone's favorite devices while also keeping you in the ecosystem where I think you have the most choice. And that's my opinion, but I wanna hear what you have to say. And while you're there in the comment section, this is gonna be a big one. Like there's gonna be PlayStation guys making fun of Xbox guys, Xbox guys bragging and holding it over. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be mature. But while you're there, remember, as I always say, be nice.